Hi everybody, happy Monday. Happy Monday everyone. Really excited to bring you something that's kind of cool and that is the tanks behind us, you escaped four tanks, well kind of like three and a half, but basically four <laughs> tanks in one day. It was really cool. We're gonna take a look and see what you did. We're gonna look at how they were before and we'll take a look at what they look like now. By the way, fun fact, if you've been watching the channel for an extremely long time, in the early days, this is the shot. This is where I used to shoot all of the videos. Really? This tank right back here was the background. And yeah, wow. it's kind of cool. So let's take a look at these tanks. So basically what we have here, we've got 640 gallon breeders. You rescaped four of them or kind of sort of fixed up. You basically you did two rescapes and two fixer uppers. And then the other two we left, the two that we left were the bristlenose breeding tank and the cypochromus breeding tank because those have more of a a purpose if you will and just breeding but let's go ahead let's take a look at the multi-tank first here's what it looked like before as you can see it has the universal rocks background i think the main issue when we did this tank originally is we didn't have a lot of rocks at the time and so we right. just put the rocks that we had in there at the time <laughs> and here's what it looks like now so what was your motivation for this Ta -da! my vision you want to say vision well i wanted to use the serious stone very excited to use it in a shelly tank and this this was just a tank that went together very nicely sometimes the rocks behave and sometimes they don't they fit together like puzzle pieces and and in this case they did i did get a lot of little angry looks from all the uh inhabitants because i was moving all their homes but um, I think it, it turned out really nicely and there's still lots of room for them to set up houses and uh, little hidey, hidey holes and I think it turned out well. You did have to change a little bit of the left side there when you added a second sponge filter though I see. Yeah, that, that was not something I want to do. Obviously sponge filters take away from just about any aquascape 100% yeah, of the time, all the time. <laughs> but the tank was with the growing population of Maltese. When we first set this tank up, I think I only put 10 or 12 Maltese in here to get the colony started, and that came from the 50 gallon low boy. But as we got more and more inhabitants, what shell dwellers do is they like to stir up the substrate. And when they do that, they create a lot of stuff that's in the water, water column. So if you have a hang on back filter, if you have a canister filter, that's almost never an issue because those filters do a really good job of mechanical filtration, pulling that stuff out of the water. Sponge filters are one of the worst filters for doing that, even though they're really good at biological filtration. So to solve that problem, unfortunately, I had to add in the second ugly sponge filter, but I still like the way the tank looks. I mean, it looks better than it did before. It's a big improvement. The fish are happy. We've got, I don't know, probably at least 60 or 70 of them in here and they're doing well, still breeding, enjoying the new, the new places to kind of hang out. Yeah, and I, I also have noticed that they have changed my scape. This is not actually exactly how it looked when I set it up, but they have their own thoughts and they change it around. But the one thing to keep in mind, if you are setting up a shelly tank and you're adding large rocks like I did, you want to make sure that they're not uh, stacked and very like uh, top heavy or anything because since they are moving the sand, the rocks have a chance of falling over. So you definitely want them um, supported on multiple levels, either by other rocks or by the background, which is what I did to keep them, uh, if they do start digging a little bit, to keep them from falling over. And the other thing too, is you can place the rocks more against the glass and then build the sand up around it so that even if they do dig, it's not gonna cause any instability. All right, so right above the multi tank, we have the Blue Dream Shrimp Tank. Now again, this is what it looked like before. It basically didn't look like much. It had always served a purpose of kind of like a holding tank for fish or whatever that needed to go in a 40 gallon breeder. And then we set up, then we put the blue dream shrimp in here. And I wasn't even then I was like, okay, maybe it's just going to breed blue dream shrimp and that's all it's going to do. But as we got to thinking about it, it's like, well, yeah, it's, it's doing a great job of that breeding the blue dream shrimp. And also kind of want it to look nice. So what did you do here? We, obviously, it's a big improvement. You added a lot. I did. Well, first of all, there were a couple, well, actually main, one main piece of driftwood that was in the back that actually looked pretty cool. It was just kind of sitting there in the back, all like hiding, and then there was a very tiny piece. So what I did is I went to my stash, and you lucked out. You got my sweet piece of Malaysian driftwood that has a matching buddy. I got this. I was so excited. At some fish store, I had gotten these two. They went together. I, I wanted them next to each other because it's a piece of Malaysian that's uh, uh, bolted to a uh, piece of uh, 
Slate. Slate, thank you. And then also a piece of sandblasted manzanita. And they go together very nicely. And I just saw it in this tank and I said, you lucky guy, you're getting you're getting my, my cool pair. And then I added some dragonstone. And then from the swap that we just went to, I got a very cool crinum. It's huge. It's like 15 feet long. Not really, but, and that's in the back. And I knew I wanted to use that in the back. And then of course, some Val, I just kind of uh, removed a lot of the, the Val from the front and left and kind of moved around some of the ones in the back. And sometimes what you'll find in this tank as we go through, sometimes I'll add some hornwort, sometimes I'll add some guppy grass just to give the shrimp a little bit more places to hang out. But I think they enjoy it. They're still breeding like crazy. I really love the color of these Blue Dream shrimp. So this was a big change from what we had before. So the next one, this is the 40 gallon breeder next to the shrimp tank. And this is a jumbo Cypochromus. We have the Cypochromus below. There are different species. Those are Cypochromus leptosoma. The jumbos are right above. We started out with a group of six. A couple of them jumped. I don't know how they did it because I think maybe one of the boys left the lid off when they were cleaning. But we have two males and two females in this tank. And what was really cool is at one point, both of the females were holding and they gave us a bunch of fry. So the way this tank looked before, it was relatively sparse. It was a leftover scape from when the star sapphires were in this tank. Basically just had a piece of driftwood and a couple of rocks. It has the universal rocks background just like the multi-tank does. It's a different style. We've got the fry in here, which are cool. They're growing fast, by the way. You left the piece of wood in, but you changed the orientation a little bit. And normally with a Lake Tang and you can tank, you wouldn't put wood in there if you wanted to do like a biotope sort of feel. But we also have a blue phantom pleco in here, which kind of likes hanging out by the wood. So tell us a little bit of a story here. Well, this, the story on this tank is it's one of my arch nemesis. I don't like scaping this one because I keep trying to work with things that I already have. Now these rocks, if I were to do this from scratch, I would prefer to go probably get a totally different piece of wood that I could maybe hide in the back. I don't really know. But I would like really more uh, kind of matching rocks and I'm just using what we have. We're, we're kind of running low on the the uh, landscape rocks that we have but i just decided to change the orientation of the wood just to make it look kind of like it had just kind of fallen into the water and uh yeah it's it's a piece of wood that's kind of a stinker but um it's kind of one of those tanks that it just is what it is i added some smaller rocks in the front i kind of like that but it's just one of those tanks that at some point i will probably completely regut and start something new and one thing to keep in mind again this is pretty much a breeding tank like the cypochromus tank below it and when the Cypochromus spit out their fry, they like to spit them out around piles of rocks. And therefore that helps them feel more secure. We do have another male in this tank, like I mentioned, and the dominant male that we see here kind of likes to chase him a little bit. So for now, it's nice to have those rocks just kind of piled up like that because the more dominant male can be out and about. The less dominant male can kind of hide out a little bit until those fry grow up. And once you get a larger colony, I suspect that's going to stop. All right. Last tank that you kind of, it wasn't really, it wasn't a rescape at all. It was more just let, let's touch this thing up a little bit. And that is the Angelfish 40 breeder tank. Again, this is the way it looked before. It looked awesome. And so there wasn't a ton to do here, but some of the Anubius was starting to come off. We had some issues with the center part of the tank where we had originally put some some val, some type of val in there. I don't even remember what it was at this point, but it it didn't grow in. The rest of the val started to. So you had to kind of spruce it up a little bit. So here's what it looks like now. What did you do here? This one, yeah, very minor changes. These are two large pieces of spider wood, which uh, I they can look really, really cool if you have a massive amount of crypts coming across, you know, through them and stuff like that. But this one, I just really moved one of the pieces of spider wood to kind of create like almost like a little little bridge in the middle and then I cleared out the crypts from the center and of course crypts they they grow under um, with runners and they're all connected so that is that takes a little time to kind of disconnect them if you're trying to, to move them and I removed some of the ones from the front and then just kind of like I said cleared out that little like path it's kind of like a little path to the back that's in the center of the tank and then reattached some anubias and uh there we go so inhabitants of this tank we've got the three angel fish right now there are believe it or not two males and a female and they're i was going to move them out they're doing okay usually the males inhabit different sides of the tank 
The black angel is the female, and what's interesting is every once in a while, the male will switch, the pair will switch, but they always, whatever pair exists in that tank is always on the left-hand side. They're always cleaning off that rock. I've never actually seen them lay eggs, but that's what's going on with the angelfish. The Congo tetras are looking great. There's a really nice dominant male in there showing fantastic color. We've got the pork chop rasboras in there. We have a couple of super red bristle nose. And then we also have a blue phantom pleco in this tank, which actually out of all the tanks where we have blue phantom plecos, I think there's three or four at this point. That's the one when I walk by the tank, I usually see the most. Usually he's kind of hanging out on top of one of the rocks. So this is what we have going on in this 40 gallon breeder. So that's basically what we did, right? So that's the 40 gallon wall. You've got a lot more that you're gonna do. We've got, a, we've got what, the 20 gallon long wall that you wanna tackle maybe next. Uh -huh. And then we've got the 75 gallons, especially on the other side that needs some touch-ups, the Kessel tank and the, the um, albino Hecali tank underneath that. So you've got a lot more to do. Yes, I do. All right, so hope you enjoyed the video. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.